Whether we are there or not, ITSP Magazine still gets the best stories. Plenty of conferences and events spark our curiosity and allow us to start conversations with some of the world's brightest minds. In person or virtually, Sean Martin and Marco Cipelli go on location and sit down with them at the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society. Together, we discover what the synergy of these three elements means for the future of humanity. And hello, everybody. You're very welcome to a new On Location episode where typically Marco and I get to have chats with folks leading up to an event. We call it our Chats on the Road. And we're on our way to Frisco, Texas for Collaborate 2024. Marco's not with me for this one, but we're going to have him on for some other sessions. Uh, today, we're going to learn about what Collaborate is, what you can hear, who you can see, who you can meet, who you can chat with, what you can take away from you to help with your security risk management compliance programs and everything that surrounds them. So you can live a better healthy life as a CISO or CRO or whatever it is you do to help protect the business and, and help them generate revenue safely. And I'm thrilled to have I'm a lot of friends here, <laughs> people I've known for a while with new friends, uh, bring in Collaborate to, uh, to life this year. Uh, Leslie Jenkins, Robert Booker, Blake Sutherland, Steve Perkins. Great to have you on. Great Thanks, to be here. Thanks, Sean. Great to be here. So I've, I don't know how many I've been to, quite, quite a few. I missed the last couple, sadly, uh, for personal reasons, not because I didn't want to be there. But I've been to Collaborate. It's an, an amazing event, bringing some luminaries from various sectors, healthcare and finance and insurance and otherwise, uh, to really bring, yeah, policies and, and controls and compliance uh, to the business in a way that doesn't overwhelm them, right? And they can still still achieve what they need to from a compliance perspective. Um, Robert, I'm going to start with you. I think you've been to certainly more than me, probably more than most of us on this, uh, your history with high trust. Can you give us a sense of what some of the objectives are uh, for the conference? I don't know, it's probably 10 years or so now that it's been in, been in play, different names, but uh, nonetheless. Yeah, well, it's, uh, you know, it, it began pretty organically. Let's just get some people together and have a conversation about the challenge we all face. And, uh, you know, it, it's grown, uh, you know, organically year over year, um, even, you know, the pause we took because of COVID, obviously a disappointment to all of us that none of us could get together. Uh, but we continue to come together. We see old friends every year. We meet some new friends every year. You know, it's 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 uh, it's kind of an interesting event because it's not it's not so much like just a conference where you come to learn. It's a place where you come to to talk about the problems you're facing with people. It's more of a kind of a user community feel, but. You know, in a much grander way, I think, than just your typical local kind of user conference type of thing. So, you know, you get a perspective of, uh, you know, hearing from, you know, you'll hear from certainly us at High Trust, but you'll hear from, you know, other leaders in the industry, uh, the people that are actually out there doing the work every day on the ground, trying to make their systems, you know, more more secure, more safe, you know, earn earn the obligations they, they have to meet on compliance. You'll be able to demonstrate and prove you know, in a very robust way that they're doing a great job and, uh, you know, finding a place where you can just talk to people about the challenges they're facing and, and, you know, think about the problems and still in a kind of an intimate way. I mean, we're not, it's not the massive event where you just get lost in the crowd. I mean, these are, these are people and, and communities and, and, you know, teams that, you know, all get together and we kind of all, you know, we're all geeks in a very specialized area. So we get to geek out together on the problem. And I think that's really exciting. And en endless sessions of geeking out. And it, it, I mean, my my show, the podcast, I, I like I look at things from an operational perspective, and sure. so does collaborate. I mean, the, the sessions are around best practices, tried and true methods to take a program and actually implement it in a way that that aligns with the business objectives, and in in line with uh, budgets and team that that people have and so real life experiences and use cases and scenarios it's incredible uh steve can you give us an overview of what uh what people might expect kind of the grand theme of things um and, and yeah maybe, well maybe some of the hot uh, topics that folks will get to yeah the theme of the with. the event is called is charting the path forward and we thought that was apropos 
because we're kind of at a point where you look at the recent events that's been happening, some mega breaches in the industry. Um, and uh, the question is, where where does this go? Where where do we need to go together collectively as an industry around assurances and, and, and risk management and compliance? And, and so we've tried to assemble an overarching agenda kind of just to to scratch at that itch, right? To to really hit on that. Everything from having some people who've been around in this industry and helping shape it for the last 20 years, having sort of round table discussions all the way to, uh, we've got some, uh, some thought leaders in the area of ransomware who are gonna come in and talk about, well, how does that really change our thoughts about um, resilience? And how does it stress all of our systems in different ways that we need to be think about in different ways moving forward? We've got some sessions talking about the workforce of the future and how do we really think differently to solve the the talent gap that we're all facing, um, uh, as well as you know, high trust itself. We're in a hyper innovation innovative uh, phase and cycle where we're doing a lot of really innovative things and and evolving things forward. And we're going to touch on those, not so much just purely of what we're doing, but what's the macro problems and 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 what sh what do we think the industry should be doing about it and how are we trying to contribute to that? So I think those are some of the things that we're going to touch on in, uh, across the three-day span. So should be very, very lively and useful for everybody. And I'll, I'll point out that I mean, this isn't high trust just spewing stuff. We have assessors, we have customers, we have partners, a whole group of folks that have a role to play in varying, varying aspects of achieving security and achieving compliance. Well, and we think of it as our entire community, whether it's those that you mentioned or adjacent areas like cyber insurance or the security control industry and service industry. Uh, everyone's welcome there and they're all part of you know, uh, security is a, a team sport. So we like to include the entire community. And to that point, there are t well over 20, almost maybe 25 breakout sessions that were specifically submitted from our community. So this is not just an agenda packed with things that are important to high trust, but also things that our community have told us that they want to get together to discuss. And I think some of the things I've come across, AI, third party, cyber insurance. Um, I don't know, you, you probably have a better sense of what those important topics are. I mean, Blake, you mentioned cyber insurance. You want to want to touch on that for a second? Yeah, I'm excited. I'll be uh, chairing a panel on that uh, involving um, some experts from the industry, from uh, McGill, Triumph Cyber and Google. And we'll be talking about many aspects. Uh, in fact, this has been a topic that our community has been talking about for many years now. And only this year did we release uh, uh, a, a cyber insurance facility related to someone's high trust certification. We've known for years that people have wanted to and been, uh, you know, uh, had benefit from their certifications in terms of demonstrating stuff, but we wanted something a little bit more programmatic. and. We'll be talking about that and the marriage of telemetry and solid assurances and how that helps the uh, insurance industry make better risk decisions and hopefully give more competitive products. Uh, another aspect of sort of marrying the two together like we've, we're doing uh, for our community is to speed the whole process of getting insurance. It's a, it can be a very arduous task. I think Robert's lived through it probably more than anyone here and just how long it takes to get cyber insurance for an organization can be daunting. So we'll be talking about all those things. And in fact, you mentioned third party risk. We even talk about, you know, the role of uh, insurance as it relates to evaluating your vendors and what that means for third party risk. What about AI, Robert, and other, other stuff that uh, is rolling around in your, your uh... <laughs> incredible brain there that you've been involved with stuff for so long. Yeah. Well, I work with really smart people. So this brain is very grateful to be around those folks. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, Sean, you know, AI, it's, it's, it's going to be a topic we have to hit on. You can't ignore it. And, uh, we can't ignore it because the community is, is enduring it and experiencing it and being asked to lead, you know, from the front on the challenge in their organizations. So if, if you're, uh, 
in the almost any organization today is looking at AI in some form or fashion. And, um, you know, it's uh, it's not an area where the regulatory and uh, standard space is kept up. And in fact, we think that's the great opportunity. And uh, our community has told us that is the opportunity because people want to do it well. They certainly don't want to, you know, imagine things that don't exist, you know, hallucinate, if you will. And they want to look at AI not only from a risk management perspective, make sure they're governing it well. And that's often a different audience than the security leader. That's the corporate leadership, maybe even the boards of companies. They're, you know, they they speak a different language from a governance and risk management uh, point of view. And they're looking to their security leaders to, you know, step into the AI risk management problem. But then there's also a, an absence of how do I know my AI system is secure? Have I actually tested the security and understood the threats that we're facing. And, um, you know, we've we've had the opportunity to talk to some incredibly smart people. Um, uh, we have a working group that is, you know, made up of, um, you know, some of the major service providers in the AI space and cloud service providers and a couple of major companies that are actually consumers and leaders in healthcare that are building and using AI in very creative and uh, powerful ways. And I think to bring together all those insights and to actually, uh, you know, have the community at, at collaborate to actually see how this is being built from the ground up is uh, is going to be I think uh, really valuable because uh, you know before the end of this year people will be able to you know to create a certification you know with our system and and stand for testing and validation and certification of their AI uh, system using the same approach they've always used to to secure their cybersecurity and get those great outcomes they've been earning and experiencing, but now to take that to the AI problem as well. And so uh, it's 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 significantly different. It, it, it's a different type of space. But uh, what people tell me over and over again is it's new, it's novel. Uh, security and cybersecurity leaders are wanting to lead on this, but they need to to understand where to go and how to step into it. And we think there's a great opportunity for the community to come together and to learn from each other and to actually, you know, to make this, you know, operational and practical and scalable and help people have an approach that, um, you know, they can deliver, you know, within a quarter or two and actually start standing and saying, yes, our systems have been built to be secure from a cybersecurity perspective and also to be managed from an AI risk management point of view. Yeah, no, no question. AI is top of mind for a lot of folks. It probably one of the most prevalent innovations that have I don't know, taken taken the internet or the news news life cycle by storm. Um, but there's a lot of other stuff going on, a lot of change in general. And I'm I'm particularly excited to have a chance to uh, sit down with Dan Nurkis, CEO, High Trust, to talk about the innovations that High Trust has um, delivered to the community over the years and, and a view into the future. I, I believe, Robert, you're going to join for this conversation as well. <laughs> um, th there's so much amazing things coming out of the, the smart people that work at High Trust. So I'm excited to have that conversation. And then, but you can innovate all day long, but if you, if you can't actually get it implemented and deployed and managed properly, um, a lot of those innovations fall offside. So I'm, I'm excited to have conversations around how programs run, how teams are run, how uh, I think Stevie mentioned the, uh, how do we build a workforce of the future? Um, I think that's going to be an important one. And I guess where I want to go, I, I'm going to also have a chance to chat with Alan Liska about the ransomware thing. And I mean, just, there's a lot of innovation on the other side of the, of the coin here as well. Right. So insights from that world, threat intelligence and, and dark web and what that group, what those groups are doing uh, to take advantage of companies that don't have, have the best program in place, perhaps. Um, Leslie, I want to go to you because there, there's a lot of, yes, we're all going to learn. We're going to have some great conversations. We're going to make some new friends. Um, but there's more to high trust collaborate than just, just the sessions, right? What else is going sure. on? Yeah, so to start with, we're going to be at what at least some folks will think is a very exciting location. Uh, we're actually going to be holding the conference adjacent to the world headquarters of the Dallas Cowboys football team. And we'll even have a, a big event where we will get an opportunity to mingle and network and talk and have a lot of fun on the practice field that the Cowboys use. So we'll be in their facility, their practice facility, um, celebrating a, a great collaborate together um, at a pretty fun location. There will also be other opportunities built in 
for networking. And I think that was one of the things that our attendees last year surprisingly found extra valuable because, and I think it was a surprise to them. Um, it's so easy in this day and age of virtual events to forget how important it is to be able to have those hallway conversations or um, you know, strike up a conversation with the person next to you in a session, and it leads to something fantastic. And we were really gratified to see how energized the folks were who attended last year. It was our first time back in person after the pandemic. And that was very energizing, very motivating. And being in a new location this year, I think that it, that, that aspect of Collaborate is just going to grow. Now, there's a word on the, the Collaborate site, inspiration. And I, I think that's there as well, because it, it, that says I feel something, but also have a desire to take action on what I feel. And there's no question that I've experienced that at, at the Collaborates that I've, that I've been to. Um, it is October 1 through 3, the first through the third, Frisco, Texas, as uh, Leslie described. Is there anything we didn't touch on that that you think folks need to know, Steve? I have just a couple little logistics points for those people who don't know. Frisco, Texas is about a half an hour, 45 minutes north of Dallas uh, Airport, DFW, or Dallas Love Field. So it's pretty easy to get to the events at the, the Omni Star Hotel um, up there. And, uh, and as we said, we've got events planned out throughout the day around the sessions. We've, of course, we've got luncheons, we've got speakers, we've got evening events, et cetera. So uh, Blake kind of said it, right? This, this is a team sport. So this is an opportunity for you to come and hang out and be with your teammates. And it's all about charting the path forward, right? And uh, who doesn't want to be part of charting the path, not just follow, but actually have, participate and, and, and help shape where things are headed. And uh, it's always a thrill and an honor to be to be part of what I trust does and, and the Collaborate event. I'm super thrilled to be back uh, at Collaborate and, and to engage with everybody and be part of the community and help chart that path forward. Um, first through third of October, uh, I look forward to seeing everybody there. Robert, Leslie, Blake, Steve, thank you so much for enlightening us on what to expect. And uh, we'll see you all in October. Thank you. See you then. See you, you then. All. See you all there. And of course, everybody listening and watching, we'll include links in the show notes for ways to register and participate and learn more about High Trust and the event itself. So stay tuned. Uh, we have more coming out on Liska down the road and uh, more stuff from the event as well. So thanks, everybody. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Sean and Marco's On Location event coverage conversations. Please take a moment to give the show a good rating and leave a comment. Remember to share this podcast with your friends, family, and colleagues. Come back for more conversations and follow Sean Martin and Marco Cipelli as they continue their journey toward redefining cybersecurity and society.